The story of Kepler's three laws of planetary motion begins with Tycho Brahe. Brahe, over a long period of time, measured the orbits of planets, took data on the positions of planets, recorded them. Kepler obtained Brahe's data and tried, but failed, to make that data fit the theory for circular orbits. Circles being perfect shapes, you might say, it was thought that the planets traveled in perfect circles. And despite Kepler's efforts, he couldn't make Brahe's data fit that theory. And Brahe's data was very good, very precise. So Kepler threw out that theory for circular orbits and said, well, let's suppose that the planets orbit the sun in elliptical paths rather than circular. And Brahe's data fit very nicely with that conjecture. It turned into Kepler's first law of planetary motion, that planets orbit the sun in elliptical paths. Now, they're very nearly circular, but they aren't. Kepler's second law says that a line from a planet to the sun sweeps out equal areas in equal times. So here on the left we have a planet, and on the right we have the sun, and I've shown with a dotted line the path of this planet around the sun. If we draw an imaginary line between the planet and the sun, after some time interval has elapsed, the planet has moved. And you can see that that imaginary line has swept out a pie-shaped piece. And that pie-shaped piece has a certain area. It's almost a triangle, but not quite. At some random later time, the planet will be in a different spot in its orbit. There's that imaginary line between the planet and the sun. And from that point on, after a certain time has elapsed, a different area will be swept out. And Kepler's second law says that if these two times are the same, then those two areas are the same. Now, the shapes of the pie pieces won't be the same, but the areas will be if those times are the same. A line from the planet to the sun sweeps out equal areas in equal times. And it turns out that when the planet is closer to the sun, it's moving a little faster. When it's farther away from the sun, it's moving a little bit slower. Kepler's third law is an equation that says r cubed over t squared is a constant, which means that the average distance between the sun and the planet cubed divided by the time it takes the planet to go around the sun squared is some constant number. And it doesn't matter for which planet you put data in to that equation, you'll always get the same answer. Let's try an example problem with Kepler's third law. The Earth is 1.50 times 10 to the 11th meters from the Sun. Jupiter is 7.78 times 10 to the 11th meters from the Sun. How long does it take Jupiter to go once around the Sun? Kepler's third law says that r cubed divided by t squared is a constant. If I take r cubed for the Earth divided by t squared for the Earth, I'm going to get a certain number. If I take r cubed for Jupiter and divide by t squared for Jupiter, I'm going to get that same number that I did when I made that calculation for the Earth. So I can write this expression here, where the E represents Earth and the J represents Jupiter. We want to know how long it takes Jupiter to go around the Sun. So I'm going to cross multiply to get rid of any fractions. And then I'm going to divide both sides by our E cubed. And then I'm going to take the square root of both sides to get the period of Jupiter by itself. Now we could simplify that equation further if we wanted, but I'm just going to leave it like that because as long as we type it in correctly, we won't have any trouble finding our answer. Now, this whole thing is reliant on our knowledge that the Earth takes one year to go around the Sun, and Jupiter takes about 12 
Earth years to go around the Sun. In other words, the Earth goes around roughly 12 times for every one time that Jupiter goes around. Final thoughts on Kepler's laws. Brahe's precise data allowed Kepler to formulate his three laws of planetary motion. 1. The planets travel in ellipses, not circles. 2. A planet sweeps out equal areas in equal times. 3. The cube of a planet's mean distance from the Sun over its orbital period squared yields the same value for all planets.